All right. So, all right. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. I'm not sure where you are, but today we're going to go over some basic stuff in Active Directory. I also want to go over um, some vulnerabilities on Active Directory. I have never made a video on this, but I should actually go over it now that you guys are here. Uh, and I will talk about um, Try Hack Me. Try Hack Me in a certain lab environment. Like if you guys have Try Hack Me subscriptions, you could actually practice um, what I what I talked about today. Uh, and just for the sake of recording or just for the sake of learning, um, I do want to go over. I do want to go over that that specific module on Try Hack Me. I'm not going to do it today, but I do want to go over it a little bit. So I'm going to share my screen and, and show you that. But first of all, I want to open up my VM. So remember last week, we we did a, we set up a, we set up server 20, 2016. We installed it on the VM and we also installed Active Directory. So I'm going to share my screen and go over that stuff. And that should be, uh, that this should be, we should be good now. Um, we'll go to the next slide. So like when it comes to understanding IT support or helped us, and obviously it's going to be recorded, so don't worry about If you want to write notes, you could take notes about this. That's entirely up to you. Um, Active Directory is a database set of services that connect users with network resources that need to get to their, to need to get their work done. So basically, when you talk about Active Directory, your laptop, your laptop that you buy in Best Buy is not managed by Active Directory. It's on, it's on a work it's it's on a work group. So as far as understanding the differences between like I have, I, and I'm sharing my screen right now, like if you go to a, a, a computer or a laptop right now, you just bought the computer and you, you bought it out of the, you bought it out of the box, right? Like you literally bought it out of the box. Like this is my computer, right? And I'm going to do advanced system settings here or rename this PC advanced actually. All right. Remember that understand that a work group is not joined to the domain. So this is where you would go and actually join it to the domain. So there's a difference between having a computer that's in the work group and having a computer that's joined to the domain. So that's basically what it is. When you set up Active Directory for the first time, you will you have computers that are joined to that domain, whether it's kevtech.com, google.com, facebook.com, or Twitter, right? So that's basically what it is. So you guys don't get confused, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing that. So it's like a think of it as like a phone book. Basically, you, you you go in, you have a phone book, a wealth of information, like my aunt, my my aunt, my mom, my dad, their first name, their last name, their phone numbers, like all their information is on that, on, on that book, right? It's the same thing with Active Directory. You have your computers there, you have your security groups, you have your user accounts, you have your printers there sometimes, but it depends on the environment. You have your OUs and all these policies set up. It all goes back to Active Directory, it goes back to the server that is managing those things. So it's very important that you understand how that works. So, and then obviously, you know, regular work group PCs out of the box experience like Best Buy, obviously it's not the same thing. So two different things. Um, as far as uh, IT help desk is concerned, it's very important that you understand about Active Directory, account creation, password reset. Um, sometimes you will have a computer that falls off the domain, like it fell off the domain. So basically it says um, the, the, the account services are not available or, you can't log in because it doesn't see your domain controller. So you'll get like an error message like that. So in order for you to fix that, you have to unjoin and rejoin the computer from the domain. And that usually fixes it. Other times you could just do a forced reset and you could do a bunch of other stuff as well. And I'll show, I'll go, we're going to go over that probably on our next session, not today. I just want to go over some basic stuff today with you. And um, the other thing that's important and vital is understanding how to unlock accounts. And I know that's like super easy. It's super simple. And People will say, oh, that's easy, Kevin, but it's not easy for everyone because you some people don't know how to navigate Active Directory. So you you will get lost in Active Directory, especially when you're trying to navigate certain things in there. You have to understand that Active Directory is, is like it's like a, a monster in itself because you could do so many things there. If you have admin access or you have admin rights, it's like you're, you're, you're basically you have the keys of the you have the keys to the kingdom so it's very important that you be careful with what you do on active directory cuz if you have full admin rights you, you basically could break everything even disable the account and, and delete accounts by accident so you got to be careful with that and understand that as far as account lockout is concerned you can you can get locked out from Out outlook sometimes you get locked out of outlook sometimes you change your password Sometimes you have a, a remote connection. Sometimes your old password is stored in credentials manager. So what is that, Kev, what does that mean? So actually, if, if I go to the start menu and I type credentials manager, right now, bring it on the screen, right? 
you guys should be able to see my screen. Like th these are sometimes passwords are stored right here in Windows Credentials Manager. And that password that's stored right here, it's a password that is no longer it's no longer used anymore. So basically what happens is the user gets locked out because their password is stored in here. They changed their password recently. So it's, it's seeing their old password, not their new password. So they get locked out. So that's where Credentials Manager is in a nutshell. Um, and that's super duper important that you understand how that works. So sometimes you have to unlock their account and it could be anything. They could get locked out from a mobile device. You get locked out from Outlook. They can get locked out from um, their PC, their laptop. Sometimes they have multiple devices. So they'll have like a keyboard. They have, sorry, a keyboard. They have like an iPhone, a MacBook, an Android, an iPad. And you, you have to ask them, like, did you change your password on all three things or all four devices? Because if they don't, they, they're going to get locked out. So it's very important that you understand how that works because people do get locked out of their systems. Um, so yeah, so then the other thing is what IT helped us obviously is adding users to security groups and adding users to distribution groups, and which we'll go over distribution groups in another day. And security groups is self-explanatory. It's a security group, right? So depending on the security created by your sys admin, that security group could be anything. It could be like if they're at if they're added to this group, they'll have access to Cisco Any Connect or Cisco VPN. If they're added to the security group, they'll have access to MFA, multi-factor indication. If they're added to the security group, they'll have access to this specific folder. So you could you could do a lot with security groups. And we're going to go over that today as well. So don't worry about that. And then you have your share file access, which is the NTFS. So understanding share folder permissions. So this goes back to, again, I'm going to go to the local C drive again right here, right? And I'm going to go to local PC. I'm going to right click on the PC, right? And I'm going to go to folder, right? And then you have to understand how this works because in, in a server environment like here, and I'll show you like, so you guys are like, oh, Kev, uh, can you share on a, can you share your, your folder on, on a, on a Windows machine, on a Windows 10 machine? You, you can, like, I could go here and share this whole thing, right? Like I could share the whole thing. Now I have a path directory I could share with a bunch of people, right? The problem with this is this is not how it's done in a work environment. A work environment is done on the server. So when we create a folder on the server, you share it on the server. You would not share it on a Windows 10 machine, which is why we don't do that. Like if you go to advanced sharing, you could only share it with 20 people. Like literally, that's it. I think I think for a server, it's over, over 15,000 people or more. We'll go over that today, but just to show you, and you have to understand how this works. So if you go to properties, you go to security, right? You see how one has a question mark on it? You go to advanced settings. And then you have to understand how this works, like full control. They give them, it gets complicated because you hit edit, right? You have all these things here. And then you do show advanced permissions. And when you do show advanced, you get all these things here as well. So th these, this understanding how this works is very important, which is covered by the CompTIA A+. So if you take the A+, certification, it does it does uh, cover that, if that makes sense. So that's that's very important. The other thing is understanding about uh, user title, department, phone. IP, password, password expiration. Sometimes people get people people can't log in because their passwords expire. We're gonna go over that today. How to fix that? So don't worry about that. So that's that's another important thing about it. Sometimes people forget their passwords, or sometimes people have a password that's expired. So we'll go over that today. Um, the other thing is like for for Windows 10 again, like you have to understand like the, the basic fundamentals. Like I talk about fundamentals, like you may you have to know about control panel. If you're gonna work help desk, control panel, computer management, understand the registry, understand system remote, understand like system restore and um adding printers, you know, add add and remove programs. Sometimes you have to add and remove programs if you're helping a client or a customer, you have to figure out how to do that. Sometimes you have to troubleshoot a third-party application. You have to figure out how to do that, right? Those things are very important. So that's that's very it's very important. You understand how that how that works. Um, super duper important. And the other thing is understanding like the the basics of the operating system, like how to go into safe mode, how to get into the BIOS, how to pixie boot, how to boot into the network, right? Those things are important. Like you, you will go, you will work in an environment where you have to, you may have to build images or you may have to build computers for someone. We don't know. It really depends on the company, right? Uh, understand the difference between a work group and a domain joint workstation, which I spoke about earlier. Understand the difference between a static and dynamic IP address. So this one I could really show you, like if you want to understand how that works, um, like dynamic and static IP. 
So as far as networking is concerned, like you have your network right here, view network status and task, right? Change adaptive settings. And then you have your network right here. And you can't see it on my screen, so it's in the other screen. But some companies have a, a static IP in here. So you go into IPv4, uh, you will have a DNS server right here, and you may have a static IP right here. So in some cases, we're going to go over this. Um, you will have you will have dynamic IP addresses, which that, that means the IP is always changing over time, or you'll have static, which means the IP never changes. It stays the same, if that makes sense. So also the command line. The command line is super important as far as um, uh, IT support is concerned or help desk. You should understand the command line. You should understand different types of commands. It's very important. The command line is super duper. And we're going to go over some commands today. I have it on my other slide, and I'll show you what each one does. So those things are very important. Understand how to add a computer to a domain. That's another one. Um, understand about RSAT tools and how that works. Understand uh, how to log in with a local account. So you'll do like the dot, the dot slash. There's certain ways to log in as a local account on a Windows 10 operating system, Windows 11 operating system. So you should understand how that works. And then these are some of the common commands you could run. So like if you're working help desk IT support, your best buddy is IP config. So you want to find out the IP address of a computer. They're going to ask you, like, you work with a network admin or sysadmin. He's going to ask you, like, oh, can you tell me the IP address of this computer? And you're like, wait, what? What's he talking about? Okay, can you open up the command line? What the hell is a command line? <laughs> so you should understand how that works. You, okay, I, I'll get you the IP address. Okay, are you able to ping? Are you able to ping that PC? You're like, wait, what's he talking about? Are you able to, if you ping the PC, you get a response, you get no response, right? And this and and that's lookup, net accounts, net local groups. These are all these are all like do I memorize all the all the you know command line stuff? But it's vital to understanding how they work because this has saved me several times. So some of these commands are very useful. And I have a few more here for you guys, so you guys could take note on this one as well. There's net user, then there's net user username slash domain, then there's GP update force, uh, DSAM. That M M S C opens up Active Directory. Uh, Net P L W I Z is for Control Panel. It goes into uninstall, reinstall programs, services. Obviously, it's for services. Um, there's M T S C M M S T S C as well. And then Win Mac Printer lists a brief list of the printers. And then there's Who Am I? It tells you who you are as a person in the command line. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Miguel. Miguel is, you know, he he's a um, he's a VP, he's a vice president. He's going on vacation next week, and he wants to know when his password is expiring, right? So you get that call as I help this person, like, oh, uh, Miguel, um, I'm going on vacation next week. I want to know if my password is okay. Am I am, do I have to change my password or anything? You're like, okay, let me check for you. So if you go into CMD, and if you go here. And you do net user Miguel, right? Slash domain. It tells you right there the information. So you're you are on, you're on the phone with Miguel, right? You're talking to Miguel. Miguel's like, okay, hey Miguel. Um, yeah. So I see that your password was last set today on the 18th. You're going on vacation. Um, you should be good. You you, you should you should be able to change it on on 429. So 429, your password expires. If you want to change your password, you have to wait till tomorrow, the, the 19 at 3.33 p.m. to change it again. So that that is that is the information right there. So if you want any information, like this is an easy trick. Net user. Net user is like, okay, net user. Okay, who's the user? Miguel. Miguel. Okay. Space. Okay. Slash domain. Easy command to memorize. Like this is like the common. This is like the. The bread and butter of help desk IT support. They, this is like their favorite command to run. And someone's asking me a question. Um, yeah. So this tells you information about the the domain controller and when that person's password is expiring. So this is like one one helpful command. And remember, I talked about IP addresses and stuff like that. It's very important that you understand IP config. Remember, we went over IP config. It tells you the IP address, and then you go IP config slash all, and it gives you more information about that that can that IP address. And it tells you like what's the, the default gateway. It's the, it does have a DCP server. So DCP server is dynamic host configuration, right? Is a dynamic or static? Look like it's dynamic enabled. Yes, is that so? That means the the IP address changes over time, right? It's not static. 
So this is the IP address. So that that's another command you you would like to um, utilize if that makes sense. Very important you use that command. Let me close out of my Discord because I keep getting ping on Discord. Um, the next one is ping. So P I A N G. And then if you do ping google.google.com, right, you, you will get four replies. And basically what that means is it sees google.com. So if I go to my browser, right, and I'm, my browser is going to hate me right now because this is IE and this is on the server, right? It's sure that you go to google.com. But the thing is, you're going to get this warning message because you're doing this on a server, right? It's not recommended, but I could add an, ex an exception here and it should let me in. But basically... Uh, I'm gonna close out of this. I'm on Google.com, and if if you want to know that if you want to know that website is online, you could ping it. Like there's several ways to check. Ping Google.com, right? Or I, I put a, I have to put ping Google.com, not Google. Google.com, right? And you have the IP address is one four one four two dot two five one dot forty dot two, and you can actually ping the you you don't you could ping the IP as well. So if I do ping that one four two that 251 that 40 that 206 it should let me in as well so it gives you more more of that now if you want to do a continuous ping you do ping google.com you do minus t and then minus t does it it actually pings it forever and ever and ever until you wanted to stop pinging if you want to stop pinging you do control c control c will stop it so control on the keyboard, C T R L C will stop the ping. So you could. You, this is another thing you want to do. Control C. The next command that you you should know and you want to figure out what's going on. Who who are you on this computer? You do. Who am I? All right. So I, I I looking at this. It tells me I'm the administrator right now. And if I do who am I, and I do slash question mark, it will give me more information right here. So if I do who am I and i do user it will tell me i'm logged in as the administrator and this is my sid id right that's another command that's very helpful the other one is net account and net account and then there's that command or it should be net accounts actually and it'll tell you like right here it tells you um password age one password age days 42 maximum password length seven length of password history maintain 24 Lockout threshold never. Lockout duration thirty. Lockout observation window thirty. Current role primary, and it gives you more information. The next one that I, I like to look at as well is task MGR, and that actually opens up task manager. So there are some commands you can play around with here on the command line. Um, there's a few other ones as well. There's like net stat, um, which gives you the uh, the information about TCP and stuff like that. Um, there is NS lookup, right? Tells you more information about you do NS 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 lookup. Google.com gives you the information of the server, the server address, the IP address. This is re request time dial for two seconds. So there's some there's some very useful commands here that you could you could you could put on here if you want. Then there's CD. So CD basically, CD is a uh, change directory. So if you want to change the directory, like if I want to go into this path directory, like right here, like desktop, right? Um, you want to look at the desktop, the uh, C users, right? Administrator, desktop, right? So if I do copy and paste this and I do control V, it should change this to desktop. Now, I'm on desktop. Now, if I right click on this, right, and I'll show you, and I'll put a folder in there and I'll put Kevin in there as the folder. And I put uh, DIR, it will give me, it will give me information about that folder. It will say, okay, this person has an item called Kevin on that folder. He has a, he has a folder called Kevin. Oh, he has an item called Kevin on the desktop. So that's what it is. So if you do CD, CD again, and you do C, and you do C slash users. And you do administrator, and it should take you back to the c c uh, dot users administration folder. You do cd, you could go back to that one. You could do dir, and it'll give me all the information about about contacts, desktop documents, downloads, favorites, links, music, pictures, save games, searches. 
So those things are pretty cool. Um, uh, what's the point of a continuous ping? We want to ping something forever? No, no. So Rob, so like, say for example, I reboot a machine, like I restart a computer, right? And I want to make sure that the computer is online. Like I want to make sure the computer is online. If you ping it, it will give you it will give you a re reply. If it says request timeout, that means the computer is offline. So it's to see if the if the if something's online or something's offline. That's what ping does. Ping verifies if something's online or offline. So I go here and do Google.com, right? It, th that means this is online, right? So sometimes as an IT professional or IT technician, we would use it for pinging to troubleshoot desktops, PC, servers. It could be anything pretty much, uh, Ryan. Hopefully that answers your question. So, um, and I, I'm going to show you real quick. Let me open up my, so I'm sharing my screen. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to open that up, right? Just give me a second because I, I have... I have a server set up. I'm going to shut down this one, right? So I'm going to let that run for a second. But that does that answer your question, Ryan, about ping? Hopefully that answers your question. I already answered this question. I think I answered that question. Yeah, if the user calls and says they are not connected to the company server. Can you ping? To yes, you can ping. You could you could ping. You could ping the domain controller. You could ping a server. You could ping a desktop. It really, it really depends on the company. You know, you could definitely, definitely ping something. That's that's what it does. Yeah, so I'm going to go to this one, right? I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to log into this one. I have another domain controller, right? So let me answer live. So, so uh, Ryan, uh, Rob, Rob, ping, ping is basically sees if it's online. Like I, you would, you would do a continuous ping, like I, like I did. Like I'm gonna open up CMD, right? Ping Google.com, right? You, you will, you will do a continuous ping on a desktop if it's offline. So sometimes you will reboot a desktop, and it will, it would say offline, not reply, not reply, not reply, not reply. And if you see the continuous ping, it will see it online afterwards. It'll say, it will say no reply, no reply, no reply. And then it will come back up with the IP address. Okay, now you know it's online. Okay, and then you're working with a customer. Okay, I rebooted your machine. It's online now. Can you try to log in again? So basically, that's what it does. So like, if you if you do a continuous ping, and if you're working with a customer, then that will fix the problem after that. So you know the computer is back online. So it's like it's a, that's a, a perfect example. Sometimes you will reboot a machine, and for the dear life of you, it's just taking forever. Well, you did ping minus T. It's showing no reply, no reply, no reply, but then it finally comes back up. Now it's online. Now you see an IP address. Now you see it's actually active. Okay. And you tell the customer, okay, can you try to log in again? And they try logging in again, and it works fine after that. So that's how it is sometimes in, in a in a uh, work environment is when you work with customers and clients, you will see that. This account is dangerous. So I'm going to show you right now the account that's, that's, that's a vulnerability, all right? So I'm not sure um, if any of you guys have try hack me, right? Try hack me or hack the box, right? Before I show you what it is, let me share on my browser. You should be able to see my screen. So th this red team, right? Red team, right? Red team training. This is very important. Active Directory basics, right? Breaching Active Directory, uh, in, in emulating Active Directory, lateral movement and pivoting, ex exploration or exploiting Active Directory, persisting Active Directory, credentials harvesting, right? This stuff is very important right here. Oh, this is very, if you if you have if you have a uh, Try Hack Me account, I definitely recommend you go over this section. It's part of the red team if you have an account. Obviously, this is not free. You got to pay for this, but this is important. Why, why, why is this important, Kevin? Why is this important? Why, why is this very important? It's important because 
when you go to the server, and I'm going to close out of, let me shut down my VM for Windows 10. I'll play around with this later. When you, when you go to the server, right, the reason why this is crazy is because when you go to the server, this is a account called KRBTGT account. And this is the, this account controls Kerberos. It controls the authentication, right? So if you go into, and I'll show you right now real quick, if you go in here and if you type KRBTGT account hack, right? You have golden ticket attacks. So people, people, people abuse the living hell out of that service account, right? If you go in here, right? If you go in here, you do the K K R P D G password reset best practices. It tells you right there. Reset best passwords for this is 180 days. The password must be changed twice to remove the password history effectively. Change once for rep waiting for replication to complete, and change again to reduce the risk of issue. So this is this account. Microsoft recommended like this account, you reset it all the time. This is reset password. And I'll, I'm going to put it in chat so you guys could see it. So you guys could play around with this. Um, it's, this is very uh, um, important, right? Someone that can create a race as a target. Um, so that, they, that this account, yes, it could. this, this account is, is targeted by hackers on server 20, 2008 to 2016. 2012, 2022, uh, Microsoft's aware of this of this attack. Microsoft knows what this is. Microsoft has seen this before. Um, you guys should be aware of this account because it's very dangerous. If you know what you're doing, you can actually break an account. So this is very important why this is, this is part of auditing and stuff like that. So this is the account. If you go to your domain controller, by default, it's already on the computer. This is the account. We don't really mess with it. You see members of as members of deny um R D R R O D C password replication. Cannot have their passwords can have can cannot have their passwords replicated to to any read only domain admin. So if you if you mess around with this, if you do you can't even delete the account. Like it, it, it's there, but let's see if it lets me delete it, right? See, it says object because cannot perform his operation to build an account. It's not going to work. But this this account this account gets hacked a lot. By the way, people love attacking. They, they abuse the living hell out of this account. So, where where are some common um, attacks? So if you do if you do KRB um, mini cats, right? This is one this is one attack that is very common in IT land, right? So you basically do a golden ticket attack. Right. Um, and you basically you attack it. So you do PowerShell commands and you attack it and you run you run mini cats and you basically create an attack on it and you destroy it and you get the password of the credentials of that of that account. So once you have the password, you're able to get in and you're able to create an attack on it. So that, that's why uh, a lot of a lot of companies protect this account because it's part of red team attacks. So you got to be careful with this account if they if they abuse the living hell out of it. So that's why it's called golden ticket attack. There's silver ticket attacks as well. There's a video on it right here, right? There's a PowerShell command here as well. And I will, I will cover a video on this, but this is very important that you understand how this works because in some environments you will deal with that. So yeah, they will be they will end up being targeted. So this is very important that you harden your Active Directory. That's why you see like. Companies use like Sentinel One or um, I don't know CrowdStrike or some some of these third party tools so they, they don't get hacked. So it's very important to understand how that works. So the last thing I want to teach you before we wrap it up, hopefully you guys learned something from from me today. Um, share folders, um, a little bit of the command line, um, creating user accounts. So. The last thing I want to show you is like simple things on, on the on Active Directory, which is one is resetting the password. Everyone should know how to do that. I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do that. So you reset password. If you right click, reset password. If you right click, you can disable the account. So when you disable the account, it's an arrow pointed down. That means it's disabled, right? If you right click again, enable the account. If you right click again, do properties, right? Go into account. It gives you more information about it. So here, it's kind of cool. You have login hours. So if you do login hours, it, here you literally could change the login hours. So he, he can't log in. 
he can't log in at this time. He can't log in at this time. He can't log in at this time. Or this day. He can't log in at this time. At this day. He can't log in at this time. At this day. So, like, why why would you... So why why would you do that? Uh, maybe you have Windows updates. Maybe maybe you guys have Windows updates. You, who knows, right? Maybe maybe you have Windows updates, and you, you don't want them messing with your computer. You don't want them logging in, right? So you literally could go in here and you could remove login deny, login deny, login deny, login then highlight the whole thing, login deny, login deny, right? And then they can't log in on Saturday at all because you you give them you put login deny. And you turn on, you turned it off, so they can't log in. They can't log in at all the whole Saturday. And then you want to do a Windows update or a Windows patch, they can't log into the server at all, or the, the domain controller at all. So, in some work work environments, they may have set up this way. They may not. So that's what login hours is. And then there's login two, right? You have all these other tabs as well. Um, you have your address, where the person, where the person, what office they're from, what city they're from. You have the description, their office. Um, profile, you create a home folder directory for them. You have this that it maps it automatically. We'll go over that next time for next class. You have your telephone number, your IP phone. You have your organization. What's their job title? What's their department? Who does what company they work for? Who their manager is? Um, you have your security here. What, what security groups are part of? Um, you have your environment. You have your session. Remote control. If you go to member of, these are the actual member. What members are they a part of? And um, environment account. And the account is more stuff here actually. So if you scroll all the way down, you could disable the account. Account is sensitive, cannot be delegated. Account supports Kubernetes. Does not require Kubernetes pre-authentication. User must change password next login. User cannot change password. Password expires. You could make the you could expire the account. So like if someone if say for example like they they uh, HR reaches out to you and they're like oh yeah I want I want you to make his account only good till Friday. Okay, so it's only good till Friday. So when when he logs in again, it's only good till Friday. Yes, yeah, so that's that's what it is. So like I could go here and I could go here and, and mess with his account. I could literally go into profile and change the date over here and and now now his 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 account Miguel's account is only good to the 21st so today is March right I could go in here and it's the 18 right I couldn't make his account valid to the 24th and hit apply and then when you when you go into here and you type CMD like so and if you type net user Miguel slash domain uh, password expires, password changeable 313, uh, password accept, password changeable, gives you all that information, but his account expires. His account expires on that day. It expires on March 24th. So you could you could really mess with this stuff on AD. So a AD has a lot of stuff in there. You'll get lost with AD, but just wanted to share some information. Um, hopefully you guys found this very useful and valuable for today's lesson. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I don't want to go over in depth too much because I don't want to confuse everyone.